In Coin A Corner number 141, we examined that enigmatic mirror, the verse that says, for now we see by means of a mirror enigmatically or in a puzzling way, but then uh, we'll see clearly, we'll know even as we are known, etc., etc. Uh, if you haven't watched that video, I would encourage you to go back and take a look at it. Um, today we're going to look at the other verse that uses the term mirror, and uh, what we're going to find is that they are remarkably different in their context, and they certainly have no bearing on one another, which brings us to a good lesson. Uh, just because verses use the same word doesn't mean that there's any connection in the meaning, and that's especially true if they're uh, written by different writers. So in the modern context, we have the New Testament uh, generally bound together in one book, and we treat it like one book. Uh, but there's no reason to think, for instance, that in the case of the word mirror, that Paul and James, the two users of the word, were even aware of each other's writings uh, so that they would uh, have any bearing on what each other were writing. They just each used the word to make two different points in two different contexts. So today we're looking at James's use of the term mirror in James chapter 1, and this is in verses 22 through 25. We're going to take it one verse at a time. Um, and let us begin with verse 22 from the ESV with the Koine supplied. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. And deceiving yourselves here is paralogizamenoi heautus. So if you're a hearer of the word, and we'll get into what that word is later, uh, but not a doer, James says you're deceiving yourselves. Um, now notice, deceiving yourselves here, paralogizamenoi, uh, is not what we would expect. Normally for deception, we, accept pl we expect planao, like planets that are uh, misleading stars, that if you try to navigate by them, you'll get misled because they move in their relative position in the sky. Here instead, we get paralogizomenoi, which is a participle, and para alongside, and logizomai is reasoning, accounting, reckoning. So it's deception by means of a parallel logic or a, a parallel accounting. So you've heard the word, and that gives you one logic, God's logic. Again, we'll get to what that word is later. Uh, but you're not doing it. You heard it, but you don't do it. So therefore, you're engaging in a parallel logic, a parallel reasoning. And, it's, uh, and James, uh, and, and by extension, it is uh, deceptive. You're fooling yourself if you hear the word, but go off and do something different. So let's move on to verse 23 and get to our word mirror. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. Uh, a lot of great stuff in this, so we're going to take the whole thing in coin A instead of just uh, the, that phrase from earlier. Uh, hutos uh, eoiken andri. So hutos this one or this man, Aoken is a Aoiken is a perfect form of a me, and it is what's called a nomic perfect. It's uh, it's not a specific person being. It's a man, a generic any man. We're not talking about Bob Smith from Main Street. This would be true about any person staring at themselves in a mirror. So. Hutos uh, eoikin andri, uh, this one is like a man, kata nounti, uh, kata nounti is carefully considering, kata down, and nounti is a participle regarding the exercise of your mind. Carefully considering to prosopon, the face, uh, tes genesios autu, uh, of his birth, and a saptro in a mirror. So the person in question is like a man, any man, who is carefully considering the face of his birth, 
the face his mama gave him, the face he's had all of his life in a mirror. So this is, this is uh, significant. This is describing a person who's a hearer and not a doer, who's engaged in side logic, and that person is like a person who carefully studies uh, his own face in a mirror. Interesting that a person who's, uh, who hears the word but does something different is focused not on the word that he's heard, but on himself, right? Bear that in mind as we go forward. Let's go to verse 24. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. So kata uh, neoesen has the same root as the part the participle from the previous verse, kata neounti. So for he carefully considered heauton himself and apeleluthen uh, departed and Kai Euthus and immediately Apelatheto forgot uh, Ain he was Hopoios like what he was like. So what happened to him? He carefully looked. He's carefully considering his own face. This is not something foreign to him. But as soon as he walked away, he forgot what he was like. That's what a person who hears the word, but instead of doing the word. Uh, engages in parallel logic and does something different. It's like a person who sees his own face, the face of his birth, and as soon as he turns away from the mirror, doesn't even know what he's like. Um, there was no point in the looking if you don't know what you saw. There was no point in the hearing of the word if instead of doing it, you're going to go off and engage in parallel logic, parallel reasoning, and do something different. In either case, there was no benefit in the hearing of the word or in the careful considering of the face that your mama gave you in the mirror if it's not going to have any effect when you turn away and go about your day. Pretty interesting stuff. So <clears throat> let's go on to verse 25. But the one who looks, that's ho parakupsas, into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, paramenas, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. So we have these, uh, these two substantive participles here. One of them has the article and the other one doesn't. But this is an interesting use of... Uh, of two substantives with, with a shared article. We are to understand this as the same person. Uh, ho parakupsas, the one who bends over and carefully looks, that's what this participle means, like you, you bend over so you get closer to the subject in order to see it better, uh, and paramenas is the one who remains or abides alongside. So the one who bends over to more carefully see and remains alongside, alongside what? The perfect law, the law of liberty. So early on, verse 22, I said we would get to what is this word? What word are we talking about? Here James says it's the perfect law, the law of liberty. James is, uh, is Judeo-centric in his apostleship. He stays in Jerusalem and, and in that region and is an apostle largely to the Jews to communicate the message of Christ to them. So his letter is uh, written primarily to Jews. So the word in question is Torah. It is, it is what we would think of as the Old Testament, Tanakh. It, it's, it's the Old Testament scriptures. And he says, if you're a hearer of the word, of Torah, of the perfect law, the law of liberty, but not a doer, you're self-deceived. You're like a man who stares at his face in the mirror, and as soon as he turns away, he doesn't remember anything about himself. And you're living in a parallel logic that has nothing to do with what you heard from the word, what you saw in the mirror. Uh, there is no point. But if you're someone who carefully stoops over to see it more clearly and who remains nearby and then isn't just a hearer but also a doer, 
there's blessing in that. Uh, pretty magnificent. So the second use of mirror here in the New Testament uh, is remarkably unlike the one from Paul, but what it shows us is uh, a, a view of self that doesn't affect what you do is useless, just like a being a hearer of the word of Torah and not applying it is useless. It's self-deception, it's worthless, uh, it has no benefit. But if you get close, if you stay close, if you listen carefully, if you study and apply it to what you do, there's a blessing in that. Uh, one of my favorite Old Testament verses is Jeremiah 17, 9, where he says, the human heart is deceitful above all things. It's wicked and it's utterly sick and who can understand it? Uh, and it brings to mind to me that there's no worse advice that a person can give or get than follow your heart. And when we look at this passage in James, there's some bearing there, right? <clears throat> if you're a hearer of the word, but a follower of your heart, so if you hear it, but you don't do it, if you go off and engage in parallel logic, parallel reasoning, and follow your own inclinations, um, there's no benefit, you're self-deceived. Why? Because the heart is deceitful above all things. It's wicked and lies better than anybody you know. Your own heart is the best liar to you in the whole world. So it's like staring in a mirror, uh, knowing who you are, seeing your face for what you are, and then going off and living your life as though you're somebody else. It's deceitful, it's useless, it's destructive. But James says, if instead of listening to your heart, instead of being focused on you and what you want, if you are a careful considerer of Torah and apply it in your day-to-day -day lives, ah, in that there is a blessing. So let's think about the two verses that use mirror, a remarkably different in their context, in their meaning, in their application. Both have value, uh, but have uh, little bearing on one another. They're not in conflict with, it, with one another, nor do they complement one another. Um, they're remarkably different uses, and that's a great lesson for us in how we treat the vocabulary of the New Testament. Just because two writers use the same word doesn't mean that they're trying to say the same thing, or even that what they're saying has bearing on each other. They could, they might, but it doesn't necessitate it. I hope that was good for you. If it was, you know what to do. Like, share, subscribe, leave me some feedback in the comments. Hit the little notification dinger so you'll know when there's new content available. And until we see each other again, Karis Kairini Humin, grace and peace to you.